In order to have success on social media or in business, you need to have a niche. And that's why in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the exact steps that you can take in order to not only find your niche, but also figure out your sub niche and your ideal clients. So with that said, welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren Tegna and I am all about helping you crush it and dominate it on social media so that you can build a wildly successful and profitable online business. So if that's the type of thing that you're into, make sure to hit subscribe. And with that said, this video today is taken from my brand new course, which is called Impact Your Social Media, because I'm literally giving you the exact video from inside that course. I need to let you know that finding your niche is the very first step before anything else. In fact, it's the base of the impact triangle. And if you're wondering what is the impact triangle, then you need to sign up to my free challenge so that you can find out. Anyway, let's dive in to the content taken from Impact Your Social Media and I'm going to suddenly have an outfit change. Now you've seen an overview of the impact triangle, you know that people are at the very foundation. Knowing who the people are that you are trying to make an impact over is the first and most important step, which is why in this video, I am gonna help you figure out what your niche is, but not just your niche, also who your ideal client is. Because when you know your niche, then you know the problems that they're facing. When you know what your niche is, you can also know which platforms these people are hanging out on so you can figure out which social media platforms you should be using too. Not only that, but you know what their real pain points are. So you can create solutions to these problems and make them be your products. And that allows you to monetize and that allows you to build a business based simply upon knowing who these people are. So let's first understand what a niche really is. Well, according to the business dictionary, a niche is a small but profitable segment of the market. By identifying needs or wants that are either not being met by competitors or that need further help. So a niche is not an industry. I've actually left linked below a page whereby I'm giving you a load of different examples of niches so that you can fully understand what a niche is. Because you firstly have an industry. So this could be something such as fitness or travel or beauty. That's an industry. Then you have a niche. People often say, oh, but the fitness industry is so crowded. Yeah, I mean, the industry is. However, niches are a totally different story. When you niche down, you're actually able to scale up because it means that you can stand out and you never have to worry about an overly saturated market because you know who your people are. So an example of a niche within the fitness industry could be something along the lines of body weight training. So this person is gonna focus on helping other people with body weight exercises and workouts and things like that. And within that niche, you can also have a sub niche. And this is what I recommend you do as well. So it goes industry, niche, sub niche. The sub niche would be the exact niche of people within that niche. So we have our body weight workouts. Okay, how about you're only gonna be focusing on university students who are then gonna be able to do body weight workouts in their university dorms. Niching down like this really allows you to tailor your marketing message and all of your social media content to that end user. And that is your ideal client. So you need to know your industry, you need to know your niche, you need to know your sub niche, and then you also need to know who your ideal client is within that sub niche. So you know that you are doing body weight exercises for university students. However, that still doesn't give you your ideal client. Is your ideal client somebody who is wanting to lose fat? Or are they somebody who's wanting to increase their cardiovascular performance? It really varies, because if it's an athlete who's trying to become even fitter, faster, stronger, more functional, versus someone who is overweight, who needs to lose fat, and who is really unhealthy, maybe is obese, they're very different ideal clients. So you then need to know your ideal client within your sub niche. And once you've been through all these steps, knowing your industry, knowing your niche, knowing your sub niche, and then knowing your ideal client, then you are able to move on to doing everything else. 
because let's just say it was this obese person who needs to start losing weight through doing bodyweight exercises. They don't want to go to the gym because they're too intimidated. You can start doing exactly that. You can understand the feelings of that ideal client and you can understand how their day looks. And when you know who your ideal client is, people will be like, oh my gosh, this person is speaking directly to me. I need to follow them and they'll become a raving fan of yours. So below, you will see that my infamous niche storming work is there. Hundreds of students inside my other program, Impact Your Niche, have gone through this workbook and they have seen absolutely insane results. And you can get the exact same results through going through this workbook and through doing everything that I'm about to share with you in this video right now. So right now, pause this video, go through that workbook for the first time, and then once you've done that, come back to this video. I want you to do that on the first time round of watching this video. And then when you're back, we can go through everything else. Okay, so you've been through the workbook for the first time. Now I want to talk about horizontal versus vertical specialization, because that's gonna really help you get to grips with who your ideal follower should actually be. Your horizontal specialization would be where we chose the body weight exercises. That would then be the sub niche. Now, you've chosen that sub niche of the body weight exercises. Now you need to go vertically in order to further specialize. We chose university students. However, it could have been dads who have kids who want to lose a bit of tummy fat because they're so busy with their kids all the time. So we already mentioned problems inside of the impact triangle. This is why knowing problems is so important. Because if you know the problem that you're trying to help people overcome, then it means that you can vertically specialize and it means that you can then figure out who your ideal client is going to be within that. So we went through industry, niche and sub niche. However, now we've picked our sub niche, what you need to do is you need to actually go vertical and figure out who the ideal client is within that particular sub niche. So in order to do that, let's take the example that we spoke about before. So we picked our industry, which was fitness, and then we picked our niche, which was the body weight exercises. And after that, the sub niche was the university students. Okay, so now that we know our sub niche, let's go vertical. And this is where we figure out which particular problem we are going to focus on and help people overcome. Because when it comes to figuring out what your niche is gonna be, going all in on a particular problem is going to be so incredibly valuable for you. And this is where we do something called vertical specialization. So horizontal specialization is where you figure out your sub niche. But then vertical specialization is where you figure out your ideal client based upon a particular problem. So the problem could be that people need to lose fat. So if it's fat loss, okay, then that means that your ideal client could be somebody who is obese and who needs to lose body fat in order to get healthy. Whereas another problem could be a busy dad who just doesn't have time to get to the gym. You see, there are different problems that different people are facing and you can figure out what your vertical is going to be honestly oftentimes based upon your own experience often your best ideal client is you just a few years ago so you can use that in order to help you figure out what your particular vertical is going to be now here's the thing you want to get really clear and specific so we did already mention that the sub niche was the university student so the dad in this example may not be the best the best ideal client but you know he could be a mature student who knows so let's go vertical it could be an obese woman who is having the problem that they're super unhealthy. Another problem that someone could be facing within that vertical of being a university student is that they just don't have time to make it to the gym, balancing their studies with working out. And so they just really wanna just get a little bit healthier and they just wanna feel good. So their problem is that they just don't have time. So that's what you need to focus on when it comes to your marketing message. There are tons of different ideal clients. Something that I do need to say is often your ideal client is just you, perhaps a few years ago. Maybe you are someone who used to be obese and then you lost a bunch of weight and you got healthy through doing body weight exercises, your ideal client is just the before version of you. 
So I really think that's the easiest way to figure out what your niche is and who your ideal client is. And here's the thing, often when it comes to niching down, people worry, oh, but I just don't have enough expertise. I'm not an expert in this field. I can't niche down to help these people. But here's the thing, if you have experience personally from going from one place to another place in your life and you have essentially got from where you were to where you are now, you did a few things in between the two in order to make that change, right? Because you wouldn't have got to where you are now if you never made some changes. And these changes are things that you can share with other people so that they can make the changes, so that they can use the strategies, the systems, the processes in their own life too. And for sure, you may not have a load of experience in client testimonials right now, but that doesn't mean that people won't take you seriously. There are in fact a few other things that you can do in order to still be seen as an expert by your ideal clients within your niche despite the fact that you don't have all of this experience so i'm about to share them with you right now because your potential clients and your potential followers need to know that you can do with them what you did with yourself or essentially what you say you're able to do so if you're always talking about how to lose body fat, how can you actually show people that you know what you're talking about, that you actually can help them lose body fat? If you're just giving tips and tricks, but you're not really backing it up, then it's likely that people will take you less seriously, especially now that there are so many people out there doing this whole social media thing. You really need to make sure that you're able to validate your claims. And here's the thing, the longer your track record, the more experience you have. And the more the more experience you have, the more likely people are to follow you and to spend their money with you because it means that they trust you and it means that they can see that you're backing up all those claims. Now, you may be thinking, Lauren, that's all well and good moving forward. I've now got you. I now know what I need to do and how I need to post thanks to Impact Your Social Media but I don't have any experience. I'm not yet an expert and remember, being an expert is relative. If you are somebody who is in the position where other people want to be, often you take your knowledge for granted. For you, perhaps you're someone who is this bodyweight exercise fitness person and you do your bodyweight exercises five times a week and you love them and you find them easy and you can push yourself. For someone who has never exercised once in their life, that is a crazy dream to be able to do what you do. So stop taking your skills and experience for granted. It is still amazing compared to what other people have in their life when it comes to your particular niche. So with that said, there are a few different things that you can do in order to be seen as an expert, even if you don't have all the experience that I've been talking about. The first thing is to use your story. Remember, your best ideal client is probably you just a few years ago. So if you can share your story, then people are gonna connect with that. And then not only that, but you can actually empathize and you can tell people how you felt when you were back then, and then you can essentially let them know what the steps were that you use in order to get from there to where you are now. And then people will love seeing that progression because they'll think, whoa, if she did it or if he did it, then I can too. It's all down to picking a particular vertical within your niche so that you aren't just helping everybody in that niche, but you're more so helping a particular ideal client. And I know right now you may be thinking, oh, but I really, really want to focus on this particular person, but I just don't know if people will take me seriously. I just don't think I have enough expertise in this area. Don't worry, in the next video, I'm gonna be diving deep on how you can be seen as an expert, even if you don't feel like you are one right now. I'm back, so I want to know what your niche is, what your sub-niche is, and who your ideal client is. Be sure to comment it down below while you also thumbs up this video. And remember to sign up to my totally free challenge, and obviously if you're watching this way into the future, then sign up to my free workshop where you'll be able to find out all about the impact triangle and the next steps for you. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!